All right, let's talk about the thyroid gland. Now, when we talk about thyroid hormone, remember, where is thyroid hormone going to be secreted from? And that's going to be in the follicles of the thyroid. Remember that this thyroid hormone is a steroid-like hormone. However, it's unique in the sense that it kind of acts as a protein hormone, which are pre-synthesized and stored. Now, where what is going to be the more secreted form, T4 or T3? Exactly, it's going to be T4. And what is the rate-limiting enzyme? Thyroid peroxidase. Now, thyroid peroxidase is important for the oxidation, organification, and coupling of the thyroid hormone. Now, you have a baby who is born to a mother with lack of prenatal care. He has an umbilical hernia and mental retardation. What is the mechanism here? Well, remember, thyroid hormone is important for neural development. And so if you have hypothyroidism in pregnancy, the CNS maturation is going to suffer. And the pathology here is cretinism. What is the mechanism behind thyroid hormone increasing the basal metabolic rate? Well, thyroid hormone is going to increase sodium potassium ATPase activity. Remember that thyroid hormone can be also used or abused exogenously at, for people who are trying to lose weight. So that's important for you to recognize. What type of receptor does thyroid bind to? And that is going to be an intracellular receptor. That's important because it's steroid-like and the thyroid synthesis is going to be our next topic. Now, what form do we eat? Do we eat iodine or iodide? We eat iodide, and that is then oxidized, i.e. it loses an electron to iodine. And so what's important for the oxidation? Thyroid peroxidase. And so let's go through thyroid synthesis in a little bit more detail. So thyroid peroxidase does the oxidation, iodide to iodine, organification, which is going to be putting the actual iodine now on the thyroglobulin that is made. Now, remember, thyroglobulin has these tyrosine residues. And so thyroid peroxidase takes now our iodine and then puts one iodine on a tyrosine or two iodines on a tyrosine to make MIT or DIT. Coupling is just going to take us back to kindergarten in which we recognize that a MIT plus a DIT is T3 and a DIT plus a DIT is a T4. Now, which one is more predominant? That's going to be T4. However, T3 is going to be a little bit more active. Now, high KM or low KM when it talks about when we talk about T3? That's going to be low KM. Now, if you have a low KM, you have a very high affinity. So that's also going to point to the fact that it ha it is going to be metabolically active. Now, what is the enzyme that makes it T4 to T3? And that's 5' prime diiodinase. And remember that drugs such as PTU are going to inhibit 5' prime diiodinase, all right? And that 5' prime diiodinase is going to be that peripheral conversion that PTU peripherally is going to inhibit. Now, PTU and methimazole recognize that they're both going to be hepatotoxic and recognize that their me mechanism of action is going to be to block thyroid peroxidase. So you have a 20-year-old female on OCPs. What type of thyroid profile would this patient have? Well, if you said high total T3 and T4 with the normal free fraction of thyroid hormone, you're absolutely correct. Remember that 99% of thyroid hormone is bound in thyroid binding globulin along with transthyretin and albumin. The total T4 and T3 is going to be related to the thyroid binding globulin that's going to be there. So any state of pregnancy or increased estrogenic states are going to tell the liver to make more thyroid binding globulin or even more albumin and transthyretin. And so your total is going to go up. So remember, estrogen increases thyroid binding globulin, so only total is affected. And that's a really high yield point for you to know. Now, what is this whole reverse T3 BS, right? Um, BS meaning bullshit, not um, part of the actual um, name of the hormone. So reverse T3 is actually uh, going to be metabolically inactive. So going back a little bit, T4, remember, was converted to T3 via 5' prime diiodinase. So we took it off of this area right here. Reverse T3 is when the enzyme 5, i.e. no prime, so 5' diiodinase, is going to take off the 5' carbon, the fifth carbon, not the five prime, but the fifth carbon iodine. And so you see reverse T3 is actually biologically inactive. And so the test question will get you on this. They'll talk to you about a patient who has what we call euthyroid 6 syndrome, in which the patient has a normal TSH, however, slightly low total T3 and T4 with increased amounts of reverse T3. And that means essentially in stress, 
the T4 gets converted to reverse T3 and not T3. So in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about thyroid pathology and the clinical aspects of thyroid hormone, but at least you can digest this little snippet.